so great to be back. I have been traveling for about five weeks and practice has been minimal, which is a shock to the system. And so this is doubly amazing. If you feel like joining in, take a seat, make sure you have a wall behind and let's begin our practice together. The front shoulders rolling back and the collarbones lengthening. The front face then beginning to recede, to move backwards. And then finding the dorsal spine between the shoulder blades and pressing the dorsal spine forward. Observing the new and subtle openings in the sternum plate area. And inhaling into that space. And then lifting the hands and firmly pressing the palms together right in front of the sternum plate. An energetic pressing. The chin gently lowering. The brain surrendering to that heart space. Inhale. Back to the thighs, the chin lifting, the eyes opening, feeling the joy of penetrating back into the space. Let's move wherever we were sitting on out of the way and come to an Adho with our heels lifted and pressing back against the wall. Spread the fingers widely. Stretch the arms well, and then lowering the head so the back of the neck is long. With each exhale, push the heels to the wall and feel what the wall brings to the pose. Push the shins back to help the heels penetrate more deeply. And then looking up and bending the right leg forward, bending the left leg forward, turning the toes in, the heels out, and taking hold of the back of the legs, Uttarasana. Broaden the shoulders and free the neck and head. And try to be more and more in both feet at the same time, evening out the foot pressure. And then in both legs, evenly, at the same time. And then looking up 
and walking the hands to the right, the left hand holding the back of the right leg. Parivrita Uttarasa. And try to keep that evenness in the legs as we turn and twist to the right. And now walking the hands to the left. Parivrita Uttanasana on the left. And as you exhale down into the pose, reconnect with that evenness in the feet, evenness in the legs. And then back to the middle, hands to the mat, Adho Mukha walking the legs back. So you're bending and walking, extending, finding the wall, and now walking the hands a little bit forward, starting to create more distance between the hands and the feet. Spread the fingers widely, turn the inner elbows forward, the shoulders broadening, lowering the head. And with an exhale, activate the entire legs, pushing the heels back, the shins back, and the front thighs back in one continual presence in your exhalation. See if you can get right up to the root of the thigh, feeling it firm and push back. And then looking up, bringing your weight forward to plank pose, lifting the abdominal organs up. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Forward, Urdham Kashvanasan, but with our knees on the ground. Widen the hands enough that they're not squeezing the ribs in. And then press down into the heels of the hands in order to better lift up, to lengthen the front spine, to lift the chest. Breathing here. And with an exhale, back to Adhukeshvanasana. And then looking up and walking the feet, exaggerating that Action, sorry, walking the legs, not the feet. Forward to Uttanasana. Turn the toes in, the heels out. Holding on to the backs of your legs, your heels. And exhaling forward. Lightly turn the head a little bit from side to side to ensure that the cervical spine is really let go. That the neck and the head are falling. And then relift the shoulders up and broaden them without tensing the back of the neck, without tensing the brain. Finding both of your feet, both of your legs, pulling both of your kneecaps up, both of your thigh muscles up, and feeling the roots of the thighs firming. The inner sit bones widening apart. And then looking up and to the right, Parivrita Uttanasana. Staying both of the feet, both of the legs, gripping both of the knees and thighs up, the roots of the thighs firm. 
exhaling into the twist. Keep widening the sit bones apart. And to the left, walking across, taking hold of the back of the heel, the calf. Press down to both of your feet, re-grip both kneecaps up, feel the roots of the thighs firm, and exhaling. Parivrita Uttanasana. And then back to the middle, bending the knees and rolling up, pushing through the feet and then straightening the legs. Keep the chin down, but lift the chest. Roll the shoulders back. And then lastly, lift the chin. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Right, taking a block, and if you have a choice between small block, bigger block, take a big block. It's nice to have that extra height. Arms distance away from the wall. Malajasana three, full spinal twist. Right knee bent, foot facing forward, and you have to move this blanket here. Left leg diagonally extended to the side. Kneecap facing the sky, not turning out. And wide our sit bones apart. And turn to the right, holding the knee. Stage one. Keep walking that hand back against the wall. Now turn the head all the way to the left, but keep twisting to the right. And then turn the head back to the wall. And release. Left hand side. Holding the knee and turning to the left. Each inhale elongates the front body. So it begins at the perineum. And as you inhale, you come up the pelvic floor, up the pubic bone, through the belly button, the solar plexus, the sternum plate, following that line with each inhale. And the exhale twisting around that vertical axis. And now turn the head all the way to the right. Keep twisting to the left. And now turn the head back to the left. And exhale, releasing and unwinding. All right, we're going to get a chair now and a couple of bolsters. And we back on the mat, continuing our work. Okay, we've got some fun stuff coming up. So the two bolsters, but one of them is just waiting there for in a few poses time. And we have a strap. And this is also waiting for us for in a few variations. For now, we have the chair. The railing is away from the wall bolster on the chair and a blanket on the back railing which will come in handy in just a little bit. We're going to start with the left side of our body close to the wall, Tadasana, and then lifting the right leg up, opening it, placing the foot on the bolster, being sure that the heel is underneath the knee, not coming in, so nice and stable, and then make sure the knee is facing forward. 
So you have to press into the outside edge of the foot and activate the outer leg to keep this knee opening, this inner groin rolling open. And now place the hand on that inner knee. Think twisting from the belly button. Inhale. And exhale, twist from the belly button to the left, walking that hand back. But keep that knee pressing open. Connecting with the outside edge of that right foot to engage the outer thigh. Standing leg firm. And then coming back and bringing the leg down. Tell us. Okay, turning to the other side. Right side of the body closest to the wall. Feet in Tadasan. And lifting the left leg up, placing it, opening the foot, opening the knee, and then pressing into the outside edge of that foot to activate the entire outer calf, outer thigh, outer hip, gripping in to keep this openness, this groin opening. Hand on the inner knee, press. We'll be twisting from the navel to the right, inhale. And exhale, twisting. Don't sink the right hip towards the wall. Keep the leg firm. Pushing that knee open. And exhaling and bringing that leg down and finding Tadasa. Okay, now we're going to bring the chair a little bit closer to the wall. So we bring everything in, still just one bolster, turning to face the wall. And we're going to lift our right leg up and back and place the right shin on the bolster. Check that your left foot is facing forward, the leg is firm, hands to the wall. Now as you're pressing into your hands to push yourself back, to lift and open the chest, you're simultaneously pressing both middle buttocks forward and the sacrum moving down. So I want you to feel it in the front of the right thigh, the front of the right hip, the lengthening of the front body not in the lower back. And then coming out and bringing the leg down, changing sides. Lifting leg, shin on the bolster. Roll the thigh in, hips facing forward, of course. Start to activate the middle buttocks, pressing them forward. The sacral moving down, the pubic bone lifting. The belly button in and up. The hands pressing to help you discover that action, that sensation from inside. And the sternum leg breaking and lifting. Releasing, coming forward, and bringing the left leg down. Move the sacrum towards the heels. Lift the chest, chin down. Deep inhale, deep exhale. And now let's lift the right leg again. And this time bring the knee to the bolster and rest the front of the foot on that blanket that's there waiting for us. Turn the hips to the wall. Press the middle buttocks forward. Push into the hands to push back. And lift the pubic bone to the belly button. The belly button to the solar plexus. The solar plexus feeding the opening of the stone.
Ah, then coming out and back through Tadasan. Changing sides. Left leg lifting, just the knee to the bolster, foot over the blanket. Turn the hips, stand the legs straight. Press the middle buttocks forward and start the inhale at the pelvic floor. Lift up, lift the pubic bone, the belly button, through the solar plexus, the sternum opening. And coming forward and releasing. Turning now to sit on the chair, on the bolster as it is. Nice wide stance. Heels underneath the knees. Press into the outer feet to help the knees open, the thighs open. Turning to the right. So you may need to move the blanket a little bit so you can hold the railing with the left hand. And this right hand coming around onto the other side of the bolster. If you can grab the corner of the chair, do so. Balava on the chair. And releasing back through the middle. Goes without saying that if your feet can't reach the floor, move the bolster. Okay, and ready for the left hand side. So adjust the blanket a little bit and turn to the left with your right hand to hold the railing. And then exhale the left arm around, either taking the side of the bolster, pressing into that, or if you can reach back a little bit, hold the corner. That will increase the twist. Be with breath. And then exhale and back to the middle. Coming out. Left hand side of the body lined up with the wall. Lift the right up. Let's, sorry, let's move that chair a little bit away. All right, now we're ready. Left hand side of the body lined up with the wall. Lift the right leg up on the bolster. Activate the outer leg to keep the thigh, the knee facing forward. Hand on the inner knee, press. Turn and twist without disturbing the hips, without disturbing the legs. And now, turn the trunk to face forward. Slide that right arm down to the inner ankle. Bend the left elbow, keep the left elbow close into the ribs. Inhale and exhale, extend. Parshvakonasan diagonal top arm. But keep pressing into the inner right leg to turn and twist. And then bend the elbow back in. Keep that twisting action in the trunk. And again, exhale, extend. And last one, bend the elbow back in. Keep twisting and extend. And arm back in. Coming back out to the hands on the inner knee. Bolt the outer hips together, stabilize. And then exhale, releasing the foot to the floor, Tadasa. All right, the other side. So the right side of the body lined up. And lifting the left leg up, placing the foot, activating the outer foot in order to find the line that runs 
along the outside edge of the leg. The outer hip gripping in, the knee opening, the groin opening. Hand on the inner knee, pressing, and find the twist to the wall. Get that imprint in the trunk. And now we're going to slide the left arm down towards the left inner ankle. So coming closer to the thigh, coming deeper. Bring this arm in. Inhale. And exhale. Keep twisting to the right. And bring the arm back in. And exhale. And back in, and exhale, last time. And back in, and back to the inner knee, and releasing the leg. Okay, it's time to get our second bolster and our strap. Bringing the chair a little bit closer again because we've moved it out. And we are placing the second bolster, Just pushing it underneath the railing. So we're basically increasing the height and increasing the opening of the front thigh and the front hips and the front spine in this variation of Nathala Jasana. Have the strap handy, but we're going to do the first variation without the strap, just using the wall. So facing the wall again, Tadasan. And lifting that right leg up and moving it back. The knee onto both of the bolsters and then turning and facing forward. So if it feels too much, remove the second bolster. Press both middle buttocks forward and bolt the outer hips towards each other to stabilize. The hands are active. And with each inhale, we're painting that length into the front spine. Starting the inhale at the base of the pelvic floor and inhaling all the way up through the belly button, solar plexus, sternum, front shoulders rolling back and shoulder blades pressing forward. And then coming forward and taking the leg off. Time for the other side. Left leg coming in. So it's obviously a little bit harder to get in. You might have to adjust to get that knee facing straight down so that the hips can face straight forward. Keep the hands active, elbows in, chest already lifting. Press the middle buttocks firmly forward. And start the inhale at the base of the pelvic floor. Inhale at the belly button, solar plexus, sternum plate, front shoulders back, and shoulder blades pressing forward. And then coming forward. And releasing. Tadasa. Make sure your buttocks move towards the heels and lift the pubic bone up. All right, last variation. 
taking our straps and making a loop, coming in to face the wall. And by the way, if it was too much with two bolsters, you could always remove the bolster and try just with a blanket. Definitely work up to what feels right for you and brings goodness but doesn't start to tax the lower back. So hit pause on me if you need to. And now the right leg up, thigh on, and the loop around the foot. And here's where you're going to see if your loop is too small or too big. I've made it too small on purpose because I'm figuring most people are going to make that mistake. So this is where you need to make the loop bigger. So <laughs> I'm falling. So that you can hold it in your hands and bring the elbow back. Holding it in the right hand and lift the arm. Keep turning the hips to face forward. Keep pressing the middle buttocks forward. And keep using the inhale to paint the existence and length of the front spine. Over and over again, the pelvic floor lifting to flower into the standing plate. Releasing the arm, releasing the strap, and bring the foot down, and tucking the buttocks, the sacrum, towards the heels, lift the pubic bone, lift the chest, deep inhale, deep exhale, and time for the other side. So, strap. So I'm going to lay my strap just a tiny little bit shoulder. I know you know what we're doing, so adjust. Tadasana. I'm lifting that left leg up and rolling it in. So the hips will be facing forward. And then loop in place. The hand is holding the strap. And then I loop. Lifting up, and you can press the foot down to get more and more openness in the armpit area, in the tricep. Bolt the outer hips towards each other, and repress the middle buttocks forward, the sacrum down, and begin the work with the inhale, the crucial work, internal work, to lift the pelvic floor, Lift the pubic bone. That's it, lift this. See how the pose, the pose unfurls to that. Press the shoulder blades forward. Breathe. And then bring the arm out. Release the strap. Bring the leg out, tilt the pelvis, lift the pubic bone, have the organs and the muscles of the abdomen support the lower back, lift the chest, deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Moving our bolsters just to the front of the mat and coming for another Badabajasan, moving the blanket too. Badabajasan with feet spread. So the railing of the chair is helping these inner groins to come open so there's no tilting and you're activating the outside edges of the feet to activate the outside edges of the legs. Sitting tall and straight. Turning to the right, 
right around the corner of the chair if your shoulders allow you to. And back to the middle. And ready for the left hand side. Exhale the arm back. Roll the front of that left shoulder open. More and more. Coming back forward. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. The hands here on the railing, not just resting, but pressing down to increase the length, the openness of the stone. And then releasing. Right, we're going to move the chair and come back to the mat with our bolsters and a strap. And we'll be lying on our backs. It's time to rest. And we want to rest in such a way that it's not going to be taxing for our lower back. As you can probably feel that in the opening of the front thighs and the front hips, there's a linkage. And when we are unable to fully press forward, then it's sometimes when we start to take the arch in the lumbar, and so you'll be feeling a little worked there. And this pose is going to be just perfect. So we've got a bolster against the wall, supported sits by the Sabangasan. A bolster here for our spine. A blanket here. Not this way, but that way. And then another blanket here. Trifolded. Right here. And a strap for our legs. So, of course, you have to check, check that your distance is right. And if it's not right, come up and adjust. For now, let's assume that you've got the right distance. And let's put the legs, I mean, put the strap around the legs. Okay, now when we come back, we're using the bolster to really tilt the pelvis for us and continually move the buttocks and the sacrum towards the wall as we push ourselves back and the legs want to be able to be straight, the shoulders on this blanket and the sacrum moving towards the heels so the lower back is not notching, it is supported, it's pressing on the bolster and it's not going to tweak out so to speak, there's a firmness, there's an intention there that's being supported by these, this particular set of props. So the arms can either be like this, with they're diagonally away from you, the palms turn open to the sky, or they can be like this, T-shape, the elbow in line with the shoulder, and then a 90 degree angle, the hand in line with the elbow. Whatever is best for you to relax, if you're feeling any kind of pain in this one, which is a little bit stronger, then come back to this. Bring the chin towards the chest so that you've lengthened the back of the neck. Feeling the back body, just doing those last final checks. And even as we close the eyes and rest here, we will need to keep the inner drishti alive, checking that we're still moving the buttocks towards the heels. Checking the lower back. Checking that the chest is still opening. So still having presence in our restoration. 
So when you're ready, allow the eyelids to close. And being here with breath. Keep checking on the hips, on the sacrum, on the integrity of the posture. As the eyelids opening, the arms releasing, the legs bending. You just take the strap off, bring the feet to the floor, and move ourselves back. And now we're going to roll over to the right, push ourselves up, and prepare for the final Shavasana part of our practice. If you're using a bolster. Just one, so we can put the second one away. And just taking this bolster a little bit away from the wall so that we're not banging into it. And then one blanket for the neck and head, one blanket here, reducing this distance a little bit. No strap needed. So we have two options to rest in. The first is Sukhasan, crossing the ankles, the legs on the bolster, or Ardha Padmasan. The important thing is that you're going to be absolutely comfortable. So if you're Padmasan, your Ardha Padmasan creates strain, don't do it, do Sukhasan. We really want to be in that resting, absolute pacification of Shavasan, no striving, no effort. Choose the variation that's best for you. Coming in, moving the sacrum towards the bolster. 
so that the lower back is completely on the earth. If you're in Padmasana and you're lying back and you can't get the lower back to the blanket, do Sukhasana. Really this part is so important, this connection of spine to earth and the abdomen receiving and pacifying towards the lower back, melting inwards. And then extending the arms diagonally out to the side, the shoulders rolling back and the shoulder blades pressing up. The hands well open so that the lungs can be well open. And then the eyelids closing. And now preparing to change the cross of your ankles or to change your Adha Panasan, but moving slowly, no brusque energy, gentle, moving deeper into that, letting go -ness. Re roll the shoulders back, re pacify the face. Releasing
And then bring the hands to rest on the front hip bones. Releasing the legs and rolling over to the right hand side, taking the fetal position. And still with the eyes closed, coming to sit up, and the pulse is right there. So just Sitting on the bolster, final seat. Palms pressed together from the base of the palms to the fingertips. Chin gently lowered. Thanking ourselves for this practice. And sharing that energy with the universe. Loka Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 So the hands coming back down to the thighs, our eyes opening again. And welcome back. Our practice is complete. I hope that you enjoyed this way of working, of opening up what's often a very tight area for people. And that I'll see you on the mat again soon. Namaste. Take good care.